what are the ways that you would say in which the hindu self esteem and identity are being targeted because we did in the beginning talk about uh, genocide taking place not just physically but in other aspects as well uh, we have seen horrendous bollywood films adverts and fabricated news stories with doing hit job after one after the other uh, so perhaps you could uh, elaborate on this please absolutely and it is a very important point um so yes genocide doesn't necessarily just happen through physical killing mm -hmm. it can also happen indirect you know, physical killing of hindus can also happen as a result of cultural genocide but actually cultural genocide itself is a form of genocide of hindus and what I'm talking about here are all of the attacks with false information, false narratives, manipulation mm -hmm. that are leading to the coercion, the brainwashing, the incentivization of people to convert to other religions, for example, or just to be alienated from Hindu dharma. And again, I'm part of a few um, think tanks that are trying to understand the ecosystem mm -hmm. that is controlling all of this brainwashing, coercion, alienization. Um, and the British Raj, the, the missionaries, they really are masters at destroying the Hindu intellect, the Hindu identity. Uh, you're replacing the education system with a very anti-Hindu racist British education system, conducting what they call authoritative research and analysis on Hindu religion, Hindu society, where in truth that research is just propaganda, you know, anti-Hindu propaganda, um, mistranslating and misinterpreting the Shastras. So many examples in which they're playing these mind games with Hindus and actually with, you know, with the whole world creating these narratives. And what's sad is you know, the narratives created by the British are you know, quite popular narratives around the world today. And you may have come across the case of Rashmi Samantji, a young girl, not much older than yourself, I believe, or just Fiji, um, who is the victim of an absolute witch hunt at University of Oxford, you know, where I studied, she you know, won the presidency of the union there, but she had to resign very quickly. She was forced to resign because the attacks on her Hindu identity, her Hindu religion, her, her Hindu way of life were so horrifying. Um, and these are the same narratives, you know, that were created under the British and they're still so you know, prevalent today. Mm -hmm. So coming back to what you say about, you know, Hollywood and adverts, you know, this is one type of propaganda that is emerging from one of the Abrahamic faiths, particularly, you know, with the influence of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, and Gems of Bollywood, the Twitter handle there, Gems of Bollywood, you may have heard of, you know, they're doing a really grand job um, highlighting just how strongly Bollywood is demonizing Hindus, vilifying Brahmins, and basically sowing the seeds of hate that are causing Hindu genocide. And there's one theme, particularly in you know, Bollywood and the Tarnishk advert that you know, is very prominent at the moment, which is sort of romanticizing relationships between Hindu women and Muslim men at a time where the ra rate of love jihad is really escalating very fast. Um, a report from actually the church in Kerala found that 4,000 women in Kerala were the victims of love jihad in between 2005 and 2012. And you know, many of those women would have been Hindus. 21-year-old mm -hmm. um, Nikita Tomaji is one relatively well-known example of a victim of uh, love jihad. You know, she was killed. 
Um, OP India, the magazine, they're doing a really great job you know, reporting on the less well-known cases of love jihad. And it really becomes apparent that Uttar Pradesh is a real hotbed for love jihad at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make the point that you know, it's, it's fine to obviously marry the person you love, but it must be with mutual respect. There must be no um, obligation to convert to the other's religion. It mustn't be the result of mind games, manipulation, grooming, essentially. And that, sadly, is what love jihad is. But moving then on to the other type of brainwashing and manipulation I see comes back to the other Abrahamic faith. Mm -hmm. And as someone as, who's an ex-Christian, it's something that I particularly you know, follow and I'm trying to do something about. Um, because, for example, the Joshua Project, which is one of the largest missionary organizations in the world, they boast about um, evangelicalism <laughs> increasing by, I think it's 3.9% a year. So it, it translates to about 1 million people a year, 1 million Hindus a year. But my sense is that that is just the tip of the iceberg again. We are looking probably at an order of magnitude greater than that of people who are being coerced, manipulated into converting to Christianity. Mm -hmm. What I find equally worrying is some of the other even more devious ways in which the missionaries are subtly converting Hindus into Christianity in so subtle ways, such devious ways that Hindus don't even realize it's happening. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I find really <laughs> terrifying is how all these WhatsApp forwards that I receive from friends and family in India, you know, they flood, they, clearly they flood India on a daily basis because I'm receiving the same message from like four or five people in a single day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm receiving so many of them. And it may seem very innocuous, but actually there's a very dangerous agenda with all of these little WhatsApp messages and pictures. So for example, I received a message on International Women's Day with some lighthearted joke. Mm -hmm. The thing is that lighthearted joke was, you know, the superficial part because underneath it all, when you read it, it's talking about angels and the devil. So it's reinforcing this Christian thinking. Mm -hmm. Or there was a good morning message I received with uh, a quote about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now me as an ex-Christian, I could straight away see this is from the Bible and lo and behold, I look it up. Yes, it's from the Bible. And in fact, there was a little logo on the bottom so I could trace where this picture had come from. And it was a missionary organization. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're trying to rewire the Hindu brain into thinking like a Christian by every day, just prompting them, sending them these little pictures, these little messages, these little quotes to start rewiring their brains to think like a Christian. Because ultimately the, the Christian concept of forgiveness is very different and in many ways it, it's not consistent with the Hindu concepts of karma and dharma mm -hmm. and another example at Christmas time the few messages I receive from friends and families here in the UK have pictures of like cute dogs on or sheep in the snow and a message of you no know, happy Christmas season's greetings but the pictures and the forwards I receive from India They've got pictures of Jesus on them. So very Christian in theme, mm -hmm. not at all sort of like a, a more materialistic Christmas, which is more what is here in the West, it seems. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is the missionaries are slowly converting Hindus into Christianity. And it's one of the reasons I feel very clearly why I have Hindu members of family um, you know, through my in-law side, who say that Ishta Dev is baby Jesus. You know, they've been receiving these messages for years and years and years. And so they see no issue with the fact that their Ishta Dev is baby Jesus now without realizing that means that they have to completely reject the, their belief in karma, in rebirth, in Brahman being within all of us. And, you know, the fundamentals of being a Hindu are 
like the complete opposite of the fundamentals of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. So the next stage is she's going to become a full, you know, full on Christian, right? And I put it purely down to this propaganda of making Christianity seem so oh lovely and sweet. Mm -hmm. When at the same time, you know, that's such a dangerous thing because at the same time, there are all these false narratives being created to make Hinduism appear regressive, discriminatory, mm -hmm. you know. And that combination of oh so lovely and sweet Christianity, but regressive Hinduism is a very, very dangerous combination. And sadly, I can see it flooding across India because of this missionary work. And that's absolutely what it is. Nobody can try and persuade me otherwise that I'm reading into things too much. You no, know, these are quotes from the Bible. They're coming from missionary organizations. This is the situation. <laughs> Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.